this episode we will satisfy one of your requests, the adjustment of the mixture screw on a CV carburetor. Hi folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and it is my privilege to bring you this very first episode where I will try to address your requests. Today, for example, we're going to find out what the mixture screw in a CV carburetor is and how to adjust it. Some time ago, I published the video CV carburetor where I took apart completely my carb and after a good clean, I adjusted the float and used a rebuild kit. The link is also in the description. In the weeks following the release of the video, I received many messages, some of appreciation, and I'm very thankful for those, but also some very important messages with tips on how to do better and some pointing out what I did wrong. Among these messages though, the most frequent request has been if I could shed some light on the mixture screw. So, um, this leads us to right now where I will do my best to quench your thirst for knowledge on the requested subject. But first, let me do right some of the mistakes I did in the previous videos. One of the comments was from an Italian friend of mine, Steam Noise Garage. He suggested to blow each hole and every jet with some compressed air and to use a thin metal wire to make sure each hole is free from debris, gunk or even cleaning products used in this very process. I immediately thought that the used metal guitar string would be the perfect item, but probably a single strand of an old clutch or brake cable will be just as good. I also got a comment from the CV performance man himself that pointed out a very important issue with the procedure I showed in the video. He pointed out that the method I used to replace the diaphragm in the slide assembly was absolutely wrong. In some model, the two are actually glued together, so pulling the diaphragm will just result in ripping it. That's not all. After the comment, I went back and checked things out and I realized that the bond between the slide and the diaphragm was kind of loose and I highly doubt that was an airtight bond. So, I proceeded to go to the CV performance site and buy a complete slide and diaphragm assembly, just to be sure not to have any problems later on. I suggest you do the same, just go to www.cv/performance.com and you will find all the parts you might need to rebuild your carburetor. The link will be also posted in the description. But I want to thank Steam Noise Garage and CV Performance for effectively making this show better and I want to invite everyone else to do the same. I also want to thank all the people that have commented and posted suggestions on the videos. So thank you very much. But now let's get to the new stuff, the mixture screw. First of all, why does it need adjustment? Well, because this screw determines how much fuel will be mixed in with the constant supply of air in the idle fuel supply circuit. <laughs> Simple, right? Uh, no? You didn't get it? Okay, let's see how the carb actually works and I think everything will be much clearer. In the lower part of the carburetor, we have the float ball always topped off with gasoline thanks to the action of the float and the fuel valve. As the fuel level drops, the float opens the valve to raise it back up. In the upper part of the carburetor, we have the jet needle, the vacuum piston or slide and the diaphragm. The whole assembly is kept in place by a spring. Then we have the butterfly, controlled directly by the throttle cable. And finally, we have the pilot jet and the main jet, both feeding the two fuel circuits inside the carburetor. Last but not least, the fuel mixture adjustment screw. Now, how does it work? In idle condition, the fuel is sucked out of the fuel bowl through the pilot jet and is mixed in with the air before going into the cylinder. The whole process is powered by the low pressure vacuum that the piston creates inside the cylinder. When we twist the throttle, we directly affect the butterfly valve that opens up. Now the low pressure is also starting to affect the top vacuum chamber. The diaphragm is suctioned up and with it the slide and the jet needle are raised. 
As the jet needle is raised, its tapered shape allows for more and more fuel to be suctioned through the main jet. By the same token, as the slide opens, more air is let through the carburetor, proportionally to the quantity of fuel. Since we're at it, let's see what happens when we pull the choke knob. It opens an additional stream of fuel straight into the cylinder, enriching the mix for an easy start with a cold engine. But let's get back to the idle circuit so we can take a closer look to the mixture screw and how it works. By turning the screw, we open and close the fuel passage, therefore adjusting the ratio of fuel to air in the idle circuit. When we twist the throttle, the main jet doesn't start to deliver fuel right away. For a small amount of time, the idle jet is still the only source of fuel to the engine, which is why setting the mixture too lean or too rich will directly affect the responsiveness of the engine. You should know that this adjustment is affected by altitude, fuel type and humidity, as well as by installing different pipes and air filters. So, knowing this procedure can be useful not only to those of us that like to modify their bikes, but also if you simply decide to bring your bike with you to the mountains or to the beach for vacation. For removing and reinstalling the carburetor on the bike, you can follow the original video. As usual, it's linked in the description. I've taken off the carburetor though, so that I can show you exactly where the screw is located. On the bottom side, right between the fuel bowl and the opening to the manifold. I have the original Harley Davidson carburetor that comes with this bike. But this process can be applied to pretty much any CV carburetor out there. The only important difference that you might find is that some carburetor will have the screw located on the opposite side of the carburetor body, so between the bowl and the air intake. In this type of setup, the adjusting screw regulates the amount of air in the mix. But in my case, with the screw regulating the flow of fuel, we turn the screw clockwise to lean and counterclockwise to enrich the mixture. In the other carbs, where the screw manages the flow of air, we'll do the exact opposite. Just to be comprehensive, if your carburetor has never been adjusted, you will have a factory plug pressed into the cylinder, blocking your access to the adjustment screw. This is just a simulation, but you can remove it by drilling a tiny hole and then prying it out with a self-tapping screw. Just make sure you don't drill too deep and damage the screw, because the channel is only 6 mm deep. Now, before continuing, I'd like to thank you as usual for your support. This is an independent production, so we need all the help that we can get to keep bringing you quality content. Please hit the like button, share our videos on your social network so that we can reach more and more people because that's very important for us. And please visit our site www.romacustombike.com and check out all the new accessories that we have been producing, like the new exclusive custom footboards for many Harley Davidson models, along with the show t-shirt, because nothing works better than sharing in the real world. For the US orders, we're shipping directly from our Boston location, and for the rest of the world, we ship from Italy. Thank you so much, and let's get back to work. Now that we have access to the screw, using a flathead screwdriver, we rotate the screw clockwise until it's gently seated. While doing it, there are two very important things you must remember. First, don't force the screw because it's very, very fragile and you might ruin it and then you are the one that's screwed. And two, you have to count how many turns it takes to gently seat it. So, let's count. One quarter, one half, three quarters, and so on. This is so if we want to go back where we started, we know how many turns it takes from a seated position. In my case, just a little more than one turn and three quarters. 
Now, from the seated position, we go back to one turn and three quarters, and that will be our starting point to begin the adjustment. First though, we have to reinstall the carburetor on the bike, because to do this procedure, the bike needs to be running. We're going to use a regular screwdriver for this procedure, but if you think you're going to need to do this often, on the CD performance side, you will find a kit that simplifies the process an all lot. To make the adjustment, the engine must be nice and warm. I'm starting from this situation, typical of a carburetor in need of serious help. Coughing and a sluggish throttle response. So, let's try to fix it. I start by turning the screw clockwise. This reduces the amount of fuel going through the system, consequently leaning the mix. The engine will stumble until it shuts off. Now I get back to the starting point of one and three quarter turns and I try turning counterclockwise the screw. Let's see what happens. The goal is to set the screw so that we get the highest RPM at idle. Since the airflow is a constant, we'll try to obtain the best and most efficient fuel to air ratio for our engine. By turning the screw counterclockwise, we're letting more fuel through the system and as you can hear, the engine revs up. This seems to be the point where we have the highest RPM. I add another half a turn, but I can't detect any noticeable difference, so I will go back to the point where the turning stopped making any difference. Let's twist the throttle and see if it feels responsive enough or if we still get some hesitation. As I've mentioned, the goal is to have the highest number of RPM at idle position and at the same time have a pretty responsive throttle control. So by going back and forth with the screw with very small increments and keeping track of the turns while twisting the throttle, you too can find the spot where your bike runs its best. You should know that if after three turns counterclockwise the RPM on your bike keeps rising, it means that the jet is probably too small and it needs to be replaced with a bigger one. On the other hand, if your adjustments sound just right with less than one full turn of the screw, probably the jet is too big. It takes a bit of patience to find the correct setting, but it's totally, totally worth it, believe me. Now, if you find that you cannot get the mixture adjusted properly, I suggest you verify that all gaskets are placed correctly and the connections are airtight. For example, check between the manifold and the two cylinder heads, or between the manifold and the carburetor. An air leak in any of these points would lend the mixture de facto compromising any adjustment, jet size, and so on and so forth. If you plan to do this adjustment in your garage or in a closed space, you have to get yourself a pumping system to get rid of the exhaust fumes, or you will risk asphyxiation or CO2 poisoning, to say the least. What I did is take an old restaurant kitchen fan, a pretty beefy one, and closed it in a wooden box. I made the box airtight with the help of some silicon. Then I took a flexible aluminum duct I got at the local hardware store. I connected one side of the aluminum duct to the box using some high temperature tape and locked it in place. I hooked up the other side of the hose to the muffler and with the help of more high temperature tape and some aluminum I got it to fit pretty good.
Doing so, I made a decent exhaust suction system and everything absolutely DIY. <laughs> Obviously, the fan unit should be placed outside, otherwise it's completely useless. Now, if you made it all the way to here, you probably liked the episode, so don't forget to hit the like button, share our videos on our social networks, and if you feel particularly generous today, why not visit our site www.romacustombike.com and check out our t-shirts and the new accessories for your bike. I am Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike, and I will see you in the next episode.